I want to share something with you that's relative to critical options because we all have them in our lives. And I want to ask you a question. What is the focus of your life? What is the focus of your life? In life, you have a critical option. You can take a stand in your life. Who here has ever raised the standard and you get out there and you go, I'm going to go do this and I'm committed. I'm going to change this. I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to lose 50 pounds. I'm going to take my company to the next level. And you're all excited. And then all of a sudden this voice in your head goes, who are you kidding? Winners don't do different things. They do things differently. And many times people ask, what do they do differently? One, folks, winners form the habit of doing things that losers don't like to do. And what are the things that Losers don't like to do. They are the same things that winners don't like to do either, but they do it anyway. Or you can follow the crowd. See, people who follow the crowd, their lives are not focused. They're not immersed in anything. People who take a stand, they're living a life that has some power. A life of achievement, a life that has some meaning. People that are taking a stand in life, they are consciously involved in a process to design a life of substance. People who are following the crowd, these are people that they're just doing what everybody else is doing. Who's ever had one of these? Raise your hand, say I. So once you raise your standard, you got to get certainty behind it, you can sustain it, and that means you got to change your limiting beliefs. You got to change your limiting beliefs. And who has limiting beliefs, by the way? Who? Everyone does. So you got to become aware of it and you got to destroy it. Losers don't like to get up in the morning. Winners don't like to get up in the morning either, but they get up anyway. Folks, losers don't like to work hard. Winners don't like to work hard either, but they work hard. Anyway, winners form the habit of doing things that losers don't like to do. Folks, someone asked, are positive thinkers fools? Don't they recognize we all have limitations in life? Folks, don't we all have limitations in life? Yes, no. Folks, the answer to that is winners are not fools. Winners recognize their limitations, but focus on their strength. Losers recognize their strength, but focus on their weaknesses. Folks, this one sentence is so powerful, it can change anybody's life. Let me repeat. Winners recognize their weaknesses, but focus on their strength. And losers recognize their strength, but focus on their limitations. They learn to turn a weakness into a strength. I'm going to share with you a prime example. How can a person turn a weakness into a strength, folks? Our greatest weakness can become our greatest strength. So that's a crowded road over there. They're following the followers. I want to talk to you about taking a stand with your life. And what are some of the things we can do that will enable us to give our lives up in a way that has some purpose and meaning, that can be real for us, that can give us a sense of fulfillment, of joy and happiness and peace of mind. See, most people are bored with life. Most people feel that life isn't worth the hassle. That life is just wearing me out. It's boring. It's monotonous. I have nothing to look forward to. Here we go again another Monday morning. TGIF day. Thank God it's Friday. Here we go again. Oh boy. You see what the man meant by many people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65? Doing the same thing the same way every day, looking at these faces, just walking around. Now, how to do that, honestly, if you've been to the UPW, you know how. If you haven't, come to join me in San Jose or someplace else. When you change your limiting belief, everything changes. Because as you believe, so is it done unto you. If you believe you're right, you believe you're wrong, you're right. You got to be aware of these faces. They affect you, you know. Try to stay around pleasant faces, and if you have an unpleasant face, try and smile more. It's good for your health. So looking for a way in which we can begin to give our lives some special power, 
Number one, commit yourself to giving your best at all times. Now that's not easy. Can you imagine, folks? He turned a weakness in life into a, a strength. Our greatest weakness in life can become our greatest strength. See, once you believe something is a certain way and you need for certainty, you'll change things to meet that belief. Let me show you in two seconds flat why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. I call it the success cycle, real fast. Draw yourself four squares, put them up on the screen here. You'll see, as we do this, take a quick look. You'll notice you've got the word potential up in the left-hand square. See, most people, and particularly those who are working in corporations, they're finding now, they've got to change their behavior. We're now involved in a world economy. We will never do business the way in which we have done business in the past. We will never be able to, in the American workplace, do just enough to get by. Up in the right-hand square is the word action. Bottom right is the word results. Bottom left is the word belief, or another word for that would be a sense of certainty. Potential action, belief results, and notice there's arrows in a clockwise fashion where they just keep feeding each other over and over and over again. Now the standards have been raised, quality and productivity has been increased because of the competition. And so now average performance will not be enough. This is a new day. Competition is fierce. So people who just have been locked into a behavior pattern are working just hard enough to keep from getting fired. They're being laid off, are forced into early retirement. It's a new game now. So now more than ever, it's about increased productivity. Now more than ever, it's about superior quality service. So again, it's potential, action, results, belief, or another word for that would be certainty. Now, do you ever notice how rich people tend to get richer and poor people to get poor, and I don't just mean rich in financial terms, I mean people that are rich emotionally. Do you notice how happy people tend to get happier? And depressed people tend to get more depressed? How many found this to be true? Say I. It's because the power of momentum and what I'm about to show you. So let me show you something here. What's the potential of any human being? You tell me, quick. Going against the grain takes a lot of guts and conviction, hello? Going against the grain takes a lot of guts and conviction. And that is what is called leadership. Now more than ever, it's about creating a positive atmosphere in the workplace and people that have that competitive age, people that are hungry to make it. So you gotta be hungry now. You can't just casually walk around, well, I'll get to it later on. Oh no, no, this, this is a new day right now. Now here's where the challenge is. How many got tons to do in your normal list of things to do when you go home? How many got a lot to do? Say I. How many have a lot of outcomes you got to go after? Say I. How many have the same amount of time you had before? Say I. So in your business, if you need something to get done, you get it done because it's an absolute what? Or you hire someone to get it done. Hire us, hire someone else, get somebody inside. But are these things you're going home with must or shoulds? Which one? Do whatever it takes. You say, I don't have the money.